Udah ya? Iya. Hai, halo semua, apa kabar? Uh, kali ini, hari ini kita masak lagi. Kita uh, hari ini live cooking lagi. Jadi sesuai judulnya, kita akan masih masak klasik Irish steak with saus rendang. Jadi kita akan uh, menampilkan Chef Mark Irwin. Dia itu dari Irlandia. Dia akan join kita sebentar lagi. Uh, hai. Jadi aku uh, sangat senang. Halo, Bro David. Apa kabar? <laughs> How are you? Nah, jadi uh, aku senang banget hari ini diberi kesempatan untuk uh, memperkenalkan rendang ke Irlandia. Soalnya rendang ini adalah masakan uh, saus yang sangat-sangat spesial ya untuk um, Indonesia. Jadi uh, rendang ini udah terkenal di mana-mana, tapi hari ini kita akan bukan cuma belajar uh, steak klasik Irlandia, tapi kita juga akan uh, menunjukkan ke Chef Mark gimana uh, masak rendang yang otentik itu seperti apa dan gimana hasilnya kalau kita pair dengan uh, steak Irlandianya. Nah, uh, buat hari ini yang udah gabung di sini, makasih banget. Um, seperti biasa aku aneh kalau ngomong sendiri Jadi kalian kalau ada pertanyaan boleh nanya di komen Ataupun nanti kalau misalnya uh, self marknya udah di sini uh, Kalian mau nanya-nanya juga bisa Jadi dia itu adalah seorang uh, barbecue chef Biasanya itu dia masak di uh, seorang pit master Jadi beda dengan chef biasanya Dia itu uh, biasanya kalau lagi masak itu di uh, smoke house ataupun grill house Jadi Um, kalau kalian tahu itu barbecue pit yang gede-gede itu uh, mereka tuh biasa masaknya pakai barbecue pit yang besar-besar seperti itu. Nah, jadi apa bedanya? Kita bisa belajar dari dia gimana tipsnya uh, untuk barbecue barbecuean di rumah juga bisa kalian nanya-nanya di sini. Jadi Chef Mark udah join nih di uh, live kita hari ini. Jadi sekarang saya invite dia dulu ya. Um, Hi, Chef Costas. How are you today? We're cooking some steak with sauce rendang. If you heard about it, okay. Hi, good morning, Chef Mark. Good morning. Hi again. Yeah. How good. Are how are you today? I'm great. It's good great. to see you. You too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, first off, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity, you know, um, being able to learn from you. It's such a big honor for me. And um, yeah, I'm pretty nervous here. And not only that, being able to show you um, one of our national dishes, rendang, is also a privilege to me. So thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to learning uh, how to make rendang sauce properly. I'm sure I've made it before, but I'm going to learn the right way now. Thank you so much. Have you ever tried rendang yourself before? I have, but I had it in a Malaysian restaurant. I know um, Malaysian cuisine has adopted it. I know it's originally Indonesian. Yes. Um, it's very, very tasty. I had beef, very soft beef in the rendang sauce. Yes, that's true. Yeah, actually, we are just going to learn more about it because um, today we are just going to make the sauce and we're not using beef. Uh, usually, it's more like a beef stew. So we cook the beef inside the sauce for hours. But now we are just going to do the sauce. So I can explain more as we cook. And um, is there anything you want to say before we start cooking? <laughs> no, I'm just looking forward to showing you... Um... A classic Irish dish, dish or a, a twist on a classic Irish uh, dish. And we'll see how it pairs with the rendang sauce. Hopefully very well. Hopefully. Okay. Now let's do it. I think, yeah, I think it only makes sense because we usually pair it with beef, but it's more like a tenderloin part of beef. But now yeah. we are doing it with a steak. Like, of course, I think, I don't know. We'll see. But I hope it works. <laughs> yeah. We'll find so, out. Let's find out. Yeah. Okay. So, um. Uh, so shall we get cooking right now? Absolutely, let's get started. Okay, awesome. 
So I'm going to work with the angle. I think for everyone who joined, uh, you guys can definitely ask questions. If you have any questions for or about random, you can type in the comment. We'll try to cover it as we could. So, okay, I'm going to work a bit on it still. Uh, we're live on our Facebook as well, on our DeRoshda's Smokehouse Facebook page. Oh, Hello to all our viewers. I see. Wow. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, so I think I'm going to start off by telling you that um, actually, just like what I put in the flyer, I think, no, I put yeah. it in the, in the post before. These are the ingredients to our sauce rendang. So right here, I have a very fine paste. I, um, I think Seth, Mark, and I already did a whole we puree before just to save time. But now I'm going to show you what I puree before uh, this session. So I have here the regular Indonesian chilies. Um, right here, I use about six to seven of it. And yeah, I same six or seven chilies puree. Yes, yeah, and I have um, five salads over here. With yeah, five shallots. Yes, with five cloves of garlic. I have my garlic right here, and I have my galangal um, with the ginger. And yeah. I also, onto the paste, I also added um, one teaspoon of toasted coconut. Um, yep. Crazy toasted coconut is everything. <laughs> Some people just leave it out, but it is very fragrant, you will love it. And not only toasted coconut, I also added um, one teaspoon of coriander and one teaspoon of curry powder. So the curry powder actually covers um, so many other spices such as, um, um, okay, what uh, I think we have, um, what do you call it? Sudden, okay, candle. Madras in the curry powder, madras, turmeric. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, a lot cumin. of those spices that we need, the cumin too. So um, that is actually what I prepared before. So this is the paste. And um, aside of the paste, we will need, usually, can you find it there in, the, uh, in Ireland? This is turmeric leaf. Yeah, turmeric I did. I got a, they're chopped. I have turmeric leaves, lime leaves, oh, and bay leaves. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and fresh lemongrass. Bay leaf and also lime leaves and a fresh lemongrass. So now we're ready to cook. I also have some beef stock, Fantastic. coconut milk, yeah, coconut cream, and just some sugar and salt ready. And now we're going to go over to our saucepan and let's start heating up the pan. Okay. Okay. So, sorry about the angle. Take your time. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to heat up my saucepan. Yep, saucepan is heating. Yep, so it's low heat. So rendang is actually a beef stew um, that we cook the beef with low heat for hours. Um, so to start off with only the sauce, I'm still going to use this low heat. Okay. You have a very good angle, so I'm sorry about that. Yep. No, not at all. Take your time. Okay, now. Okay, it's still not heated. Once it's heated, I'm going to put in some uh, oil. I'll be using yep. coconut oil. You can actually use vegetable oil or just any other any other oil than olive oil. We don't usually use olive oil for Indonesian food, but <laughs> yeah, you can. Well, I'm, I'm using it just a drop of uh, extra virgin olive oil, just a drop. Oh, okay, that's good. <clears throat> yep, you know, um, I'll be using coconut oil just because this country is rich in coconut. I tell you, so I uh. <laughs> Yeah, so just now that it's heating up. I'm going to add just some coconut oil. 
you don't want um, too little oil, I think you want to add um, a few more drops just because yep. Indonesian food is um, usually um, oily, but as you cook, the oil will separate from the stew. Okay. Beautiful. So, we're waiting for it to heat up. Just a few moments here. Okay. Okay. How do you find the induction? The induction cooker takes a minute to heat up, I think, does it? Yeah, yeah, it takes a while. I'm sorry about that. No, okay. take your time. I'm just going to remove mine from the heat for a moment, just because it'll get, it'll get too hot. Okay. Okay, now that mine is hot, uh, I'm going to add the paste. Perfect. The pan. Yes. So we're adding our paste mixture. Yeah. Beautiful. Listen to that. And we're gonna keep stirring at this point. You don't wanna stop stirring. Excellent. Now we're gonna add up the leaves. Um, I have one turmeric leaves and one bay leaf with the lime leaf. And also so turmeric leaf, bay leaf and lime leaf. Bay leaf and lime leaf and also this lemongrass. I crushed it with the back Perfect. of my knife, yeah? And cut it short like this. And just throw it yep. in the pan. And we'll Fantastic. And yeah, we cooked everything. I need to show you what my pan looks like. It looks like this. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Hmm. Smells very, very good. Yeah, I know. It smells amazing. I'm... I'm actually quite surprised to know that you can find turmeric leaf in, uh, in Ireland. I was surprised too. Don't worry, I was surprised too. <laughs> okay. That's a good kind of surprise, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Next up, we're going to add... <clears throat> we are going into the pan is our beef stock. Um, I'm Excellent. Add... 100 ml of beef stock. 100 ml. Yes. Okay. Whoa. What do you think? Hmm. Smells really fantastic. Good. Smells Thank amazing. You. I hope you like it. I hope you like. Um. I mean, I hope you like the spicy. Can you take the heat? <laughs> do you like, Sorry. Do you like spicy food? I love spicy food. The hotter, the better. Oh, really? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah we, do, uh, we do a lot of spicy dishes here at the Smokehouse. And we do a chicken wing challenge, which is basically we will um, cook as many Carolina Reapers and Scotch bonnets down as we can mm -hmm. into a paste. And yep. then we may add 15 or 20 Reapers and Scotch bonnets to six chicken wings to see who wow. can finish them, you know, uh, as a customer challenge. It works out very well. Oh, but it's wow. very hot, very hot. Okay, I would love to try it one day. <laughs> Definitely. But I won't be taking the challenge, okay? Just <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, now we're going to add our coconut milk, coconut cream, 30 ml, uh, 30 okay. ml of coconut cream. Yep, coconut cream, 30 ml. In there, and, and quickly we're going to toss in uh, our salt. Around one teaspoon of salt and teaspoon of sea salt, yep. Yep, and one teaspoon of brown sugar. I'm just going Beautiful. to take a pinch. I usually just eyeball everything. Yep. Okay, so at this point you wanna make sure that you have a low heat and you keep yep. stirring. You keep stirring it. We're gonna keep stirring Excellent. it. It's gonna take a while. We're going to mm -hmm. keep stirring it until it comes together and is cooked thoroughly. So, I want to keep stirring and... Well, I can see as the heat is hitting, it's definitely starting to come together. I can, I can smell yeah. the coconut mixing with the curry. I can smell the leaves. Yeah, I know. Very you nice. Tell me about it, Chef. Yep. I hope you enjoy it. You can even share it with your friends or your family. 
So this is actually how people do rendang over here. We use all fresh ingredients and turmeric leaf is a must. At first, I really thought that you could not get your hands on any turmeric leaves. So I was, yeah, just like what I said, I was surprised. But this is just the authentic rendang. It's got to have turmeric leaf in it. Yep. So we are going to keep stirring until the sauce thickens. Um, it's going to take a while. So if there's, uh, yeah, we'll just keep chatting, I think. <laughs> At this point. The, the smells are really fantastic, you know? Yeah, I hope you like it. Actually, you know what, Chef? Um, we usually would cook window for hours. Um, if it is a dish too, if it, if it comes with the, with the meat, then it will take around yeah. three and three and a half hours for one yeah. meat. But then, because it's just a sauce, so, you know, we wait until everything becomes and it's done. But yeah, of course. The longer you cook it, the darker the color will be. So actually, I can say that the most beautiful color of rendang is more of a more of a, like a black brown kind of um, color. But yeah, we cannot do it right now because we're not cooking it with the stew. So this is what we can do. But this is just the original rendang recipe that I'm showing you. Next time, if you well, it's the same with uh, Irish stew. You would cook Irish stew, probably the same cut of beef for maybe three hours, minimum three hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. But instead of instead of a fruity sauce, it would be more of an oxtail-based sauce where you'd have a beef stock, a coloured beef stock, mm -hmm. and you'd reduce it over three hours. And again, the, the ideal colour for that is almost black, almost. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is actually um, the best color of rendang that I like. But then, um, yeah, I think this one will taste this as good. So, okay, we'll see. Well, if it yeah, tastes as good as it smells, we're in luck. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting to reduce. We're starting to reduce a little bit now. It's reduced by probably one third. Okay. Yeah, it's going to reduce because I thought we were just going to make like one portion of steak. So, I use like yep. a, yeah, this is for one portion of serving. Okay. What we gotta do is that we're going to stir for maybe a couple more minutes until yep. it's ready and, you know, yeah, comes together. Can you actually get so one down, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I cut you. Sorry, no, I was going to say, what, what cut of steak are you going to use? Sorry? What type, what type of steak are you going to use? Uh, I'm going to use sirloin. It's wagyu, wagyu sirloin. Wagyu sirloin. Sorry, Seth, I think I did lose you a little bit. Do you hear me well? Do you hear me? Okay. Hello? Hi, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay, that's good. That's good. So, I am going to use Wagyu sirloin. Ah, very nice. Wagyu sirloin. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> I am a big fan of steak. But, you know, actually steak in our country, we have to import Mm, the steaks that we are going to cook. So it's pretty expensive here. So we don't eat it very often. <laughs> no, I imagine not. None of it's imported. But we're very lucky here with the quality of beef we have. Uh, local beef, mm -hmm. especially, you know. So I'm using a, I'm yeah. using a, an 8 ounce ribeye. That would be, I mean, it would be very, oh. very local. Wow, that's really great. Locally raised, locally produced. Okay, you know what? I did my research. And I, and from my research, it came out that Irish beef is one of the best beef in the world. It's grass-fed. Is it so? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, grass-fed Irish beef is probably as good as it wow. gets, to be honest with you. 
I would say it's up there certainly with the best beef in the world. Okay. My sauce has started to come together and now it is frotty. Um, what about yours? How is yours doing? Like yeah, no. Perfect. It's reduced a good bit. It's becoming a bit thicker. Yep. I think it's going to take uh, two more minutes and we're done. Excellent. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I'm looking forward to testing it with the beef, definitely. Uh, yeah, same here. I can't even... Yep. Can't wait to try it. This on its own. Um, by this time, you might want to adjust the taste, see if it needs more salt or sugar. You can give it a try. Mmm. Mine is amazing. Oh. Wow. That's very nice. Spicy. It's very spicy. <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> hot. <laughs> yeah, it's breakfast time here. I don't usually eat um, uh -huh. spicy Asian food at breakfast time. Okay. <laughs> very, very nice though. Yep. Okay, I think mine is about done. So, this is like the end of... The end look that you want in your very nice. Uh, yep. Can I see your chef? There you go. Let me bring it over. Okay. Let me just. I think mine may be slightly uh, lighter in color due to the different type of curry I used. Okay. But it's definitely oh. come together. Oh wow! Yeah, I like the texture. I like the texture. Yeah, looking very good. Amazing. Very nice. Awesome. Very nice. Yay! I did my So I'm, gonna, I'm happy. I'm going to show you how to make a potato rasti. Very simple yeah. dish. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a potato rasti mm -hmm. with a quick cooked medium rare ribeye steak and grilled asparagus. Yep. Um, so you, what you need is you need your grater. Yep, I have my grater here. Couple of potatoes. Okay. So, we're going to grate mm -hmm. one and a half potatoes thereabouts into our towel. Okay? Straight into our towel. Straight into our towel, okay. We have Let your towel start towel, on the board. Yep. Same towel. <laughs> yeah, matching towel. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So grate your potato into the towel. Okay. Do you, are you which part of the grater are you using? The it doesn't matter how fine or how thick of a grain you do. Okay. Doesn't matter if skin is on or skin is off. Yep. I like this longer, longer looking. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Do you always have potato rasti together with steak in Ireland? Well, for me, it's it's a snack that I love to have. It, it, this is more something I would eat at home if I was hungry. Okay, I see. So, I mean, what happened is basically potatoes came to Ireland um, first in Europe because we're the most westerly country. In about okay. the 1500s, potatoes came from South America. And once, pe once people figured out they would grow anywhere, they spread across Europe, and we got back all these wonderful dishes, French fries, rasti, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Rasti would have come back from Switzerland. Uh, it was traditionally a Swiss breakfast food. Yeah. I see. Yeah, traditionally. Yeah. Okay, so... So let me know. You finished grading? One potato? Yes, I'm done with one potato. How many potatoes... Do you think you have enough? Let me see. It's perfect, perfect. 
Okay. No, that's perfect. Go with one. Yeah. So if you if you close up your towel. Mm-hmm. Like this. Okay. Okay. I get a bowl. Any bowl. Okay, I'm gonna get myself a bowl. Ooh. Okay. Now we're gonna twist and squeeze our towel into the bowl. Mm-hmm. And remove all the moisture. Okay. Squeeze out. Start the moisture. Okay. Whoa. Just as much as you can. Now you'll find the liquid I'm extracting is a bit darker because I have the skins left on. Mm-hmm. But if you can hear, yep, there is a lot of liquid in one potato. Okay. And then just give it a final squeeze. Yep. Draw out all the liquid. Mm -hmm. Get rid of our starch. Okay. I only have Grab a candle here. <laughs> It'll be fine. Doesn't size okay. is perfect. Perfect. So if you get another bowl, any bowl. Okay, just give me a minute here. Take your time. Okay. So empty your potato into your bowl. Mhm. Mm okay, we put the potato into the bowl. Yep. Okay. Nice. Now the good thing about this is you can put any flavor in this. You could put bacon in it. You can put vegetables in it. We're going to do not plain, but we're just going to do lightly seasoned rusty. But you could add bacon, you could add salami, you could add chorizo and take it any direction you want it. You could do it with mushrooms and have a fried egg on top, whatever way you like. But we're just, for this, for wit steak, we're just going to add a small bit of chopped shallot. Okay. Chopped shallot. Yep. Got it ready. Just a sprinkle. Salt. Don't be shy with the salt. Plenty of salt. Plenty of salt. And pepper. Okay. Plenty of salt and pepper. And then we're going to mix by hand. You're using a black pepper, right? Yeah, black pepper, exactly. In Indonesia, we put so much white pepper, we don't really use black pepper unless we are cooking Western food. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you should um, start to heat your pan. Oh, start to heat my pan. Okay, sorry. Yeah. What did you say we should do? Like we should mix it with hand. Mix it by the hand. Mix everything. So yeah, mix it by hand. Mix it through by hand. That's it. Okay. And once our pan is hot, we'll add it to our pan and we'll press it down. We press it down. Okay. Yeah. We we'll get our pan it. hot first. With a little bit of uh, oil. Okay, is it low heat or high heat? High heat initially. We start with high heat. Okay. So I'll mix everything together. That's it, just mix all your spice through by hand, all your seasoning through by hand. Okay. You find people in Ireland love to eat potatoes with the skin on. Mm-hmm, okay. It's a more earthy flavor, it's, uh, it's a deeper flavor, you know? Can I be. See. I peel my potatoes, so no skin for me. <laughs> That's all right, we can live with that. Okay. So, is your pan getting hot? Mm-hmm. My pan is hot. Yeah. 
Excellent. It's so really hot yet, but yeah, maybe this. No, that's fine. Minute. That's fine. Yeah, we'll give it one more minute, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a handful yep. of our potato mix, and we're going to sit it in the pan, and then we're going to use either a spoon or I like to use a masher, or we can use your hand and a towel and press it into the pan. Okay, so do we put oil or not? Yeah, just a little bit of oil. Just, just a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of olive oil. Any oil, whatever oil you have, uh, olive oil, vegetable oil will be perfect. Okay. I'll be using the same spatula. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. How? Oh. Okay, give me a minute. Take your time. There's no panic. <laughs> Gas is great. I'm using gas, but the handles of the cans get very, very, very hot. Very hot. Yep. Okay, it's really hot now. I think we can just... Yep. Okay. Okay, excellent. So take a handful of your potato mix. Okay. Take it in your hand. Okay. A big handful? A big handful. Yeah, as much as you can fit in your hand. Yeah. As much as you can lift. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're yes. going to sit it into a hot pan. Yes. All right. Like this. Okay. We're going to press it down. Press it down a little bit, and you should, it should almost form a pancake. Just tighten up yes. the edges, and there's still starch left in the potato, so you'll find that it will bind itself. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Smells good. Okay, so we keep it on a high heat, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to leave it on high heat for a couple of minutes and then we're going to turn to a low heat. But I think while, while we do that, we can prepare the asparagus and get it ready. Awesome. I think I actually kind of like um, use everything that's in my bowl. I only had like a handful of potato. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, you can do it on any size. You can bake them large in a in a um, eighteen inch pan. You can do them small. You can do them in baking trays. You can make individual miniature ones. They're very versatile. There's no wrong size. There's no wrong size. Okay, awesome. But what I do like to do is while it's cooking, mm -hmm. I would add a little bit of butter if you have it, just around the edges. Uh, butter. If you have it, if not, olive oil is fine. Butter? Is it butter? Sorry, I, because the pen is yeah. very, I can't really hear you well. Okay. No problem. That butter is going to give it a lovely, lovely dark color. And oil will have the same effect. I'm going to switch mine to a low heat, but I would, I would say leave yours on a heat for the moment. I think I'm going to set mine to low heat, just because when I put the butter, it can brown immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it. I hope it doesn't burn. How do you know that it's not burned? Uh, well, if it burns, you'll smell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. If you're concerned, if you're concerned it's going to burn, definitely turn it down to a low heat. 
But you should see from the top, you'll see the outside potatoes start to cook long before it burns. Okay. I can see that it's turning golden on the edge. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> then low heat, turn it to a low heat. Yep. Fingers crossed it's not burning. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, low, heat. low heat, low heat. Okay. Excellent. Now we're just going to leave it alone on low heat for about two or three minutes and then I'm going to show you how to turn it. Okay. Awesome. Yep. So, asparagus. Asparagus. So we won't be I using think, that um, anymore, right? No, not at all, not at all. And I think for the purposes, the purposes of one portion, four or five asparagus is perfect. Four asparagus, yep. So what we're going to do is, we're going to cut our asparagus at an angle into spears, just here. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut them at an angle here and discard this part, okay? Wait, let me have a closer look. Sorry, how? So we're going to see them here. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut here like this. Yep. That's it. Just cut the ends at a slight angle. Yep. How big is okay. the asparagus? Yeah. So Can just take it. maybe an inch and a half, two inches at the bottom. Okay. Two, okay. And then awesome. we're, we're going to use the rest, okay? Yeah, I'm going to let you go first so I can have a better sense of... So you see it here? And that's what I'm left with. Okay. Okay. I have so four of them. Long I have a long uh, Yeah, maybe cut them a little bit shorter then. Maybe cut two or three inches from them. Okay. So we'll just try and get them a similar length, all of them. A lot of people peel these. I just like to wash them. I like to crunch in the outside skin. How does this look? Let me have a closer look. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Perfect. So, once our asparagus is prepped, we're going to leave it here to one side. Sorry, what do we need now? When are you are you finished with the asparagus? Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to season our steak. Okay. Oh, so we see here. We have a, you see? <laughs> I forgot to take it out. But yeah, this I think. Very nice. And if you okay. see, I'm using a Irish ribeye. Wow, looking good. From the center of the rib, beautiful mm -hmm. cut. Beautiful. I'm gonna eat money. So all you need for your steak is salt, pepper. This is mine, what do you think? Wow, that is beautiful. It's a beautiful cut of meat. Thank you. Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, so what do we do now, Chef? So, a little bit of oil on our steak, just a drop. A little bit of? Oil, on the steak, okay. directly on the steak. Directly on the steak, okay. And we're going to rub it in on both sides. On both sides? Yep. Okay. Is there a way that um, Iris cook steak and how it is different from the rest. Is there like a certain technique to it? What I like to do is I like to make sure just a tiny amount of oil brushed on my pan. 
Mm -hmm. I, I like to get the pan very hot. Okay. And I have oil and seasoning on my steak. And I will, once I put the steak in the hot pan, I won't touch it until it needs to be turned. I will, generally, I will only turn the steak once. Okay. But then I will also sit it on its side to cook the fat side and the other mm -hmm. side. I and see. for me, I think we will cook the steak to rare and we'll rest it for, a, we'll rest it for a, just a minute or two and we'll serve it with the rosti and the asparagus at medium rare. Okay, awesome. That sounds great. <laughs> okay, walk me through it. I'm done. Excellent. So, salt. Salt. Again, both sides. Okay. Plenty of salt, don't be shy. Plenty of salt. Black pepper. Both sides. So you can see the steak is very well seasoned and you're going to have to season them on your plate. Don't be afraid to rub the steak around in that. Gather it all up. You'll probably lose 30% of it, but we'll get it back. So we can just rub it around in any seasoning excess. Okay. Yep, doing exactly Perfect. the same. So, when you've your steak, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I think yours might taste better though if you're using Wagyu certainly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna leave this for a minute. It's seasoned, we're gonna leave it to the side. Okay. And come come back to our rasti. Okay, let's do it. So at this point, your rasti should look some before we turn it, it should look similar to this. Let me see. Oh yeah, my mine looks a little bit browner. That's fine, but we're going to turn it now, okay? Okay, let's do it. So you get a spatula and get under your rusty. It should hold together as one piece. Mm hmm. A spatula or an egg turner. Yep. We get under it. Okay. Yeah, and look, just one movement. One movement. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Golden brown. I hope mine works. Yay! And that smell, it smells so like... Beautiful. What do you think? Freshly baked banana wedge. Let me see. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Yay. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you so much for the recipe. I am a big fan of pancake, anything fried, corn fritters. Um, do you know corn fritters? It's from Indonesia. Yes. We kind of like fry the corn, something this like this this type like a rosti kind of way. It's very good. I mean, I love everything like you know semi fried. Do you call it semi fried? Me too. Absolutely. It gives a great flavor. Yeah. Amazing. Frying yeah. stuff, especially in butter. Is definitely the way to cook things. You know, it's there's a reason mm -hmm. classical French cooking is done in butter. It's because it's the best way to cook frying. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Wow. So you you were telling me on the phone the other day that you want to tell me about the history of this classic Irish steak that we are doing. Um, yeah, would you so let me? So I think one? traditionally. Steak wasn't eaten in Ireland until the last maybe 20 or 30 years because it was a very expensive cut of meat. Okay. And once, <clears throat> once people got a little bit more money, they became a little bit more familiar with the finer cuts of beef. Okay. And steak has exploded in popularity in the last 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. And okay. now people are becoming more refined in the type of beef they choose, the type of steak they choose. And how they like it cooked, where maybe 10 years ago, most people would have had their steak well done. I see. Now, yeah. the majority, I definitely see in the restaurant, the majority will have it medium or under. So medium, medium rare, 
uh, rare or blue even, you know, mm -hmm. which is basically raw. Um, yeah. When it comes to pairing with steak, I suppose a traditional way to serve steak always in Ireland is with mushrooms, onions, and then French fries or potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, but you find though, a lot of places doing a more modern twist. So we're doing potato rosti, for instance. Yeah. Some places will yeah. serve it with a, with a baked potato or with a different uh, type of vegetable or a stir-fried vegetable. There's a million, it's so versatile, there's a million different things you can do with it. But yeah. like I was saying to you about how we serve potatoes, basically when potatoes came here first, we, they would have just traditionally been boiled about 400 years ago. Yep. As they were farmed here, I think when they came here first, they were farmed on about 40,000 acres and shipped to Europe. And then as they were shipped around Europe, recipes started to come back. Your French fries, your Rosties, even vodka, which of oh. course is one of the more popular recipes. These are things that came back. And now there are a thousand uses, if not more, for potatoes. I see. Yep, yep, yep. It keeps evolving with time, I think. Um, like even with food, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the next time if you want to do something modern with your steak, you should pair with rendang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely an option. <laughs> Absolutely. How is your potato rafi looking? Um, it's doing great. It's still... How does it smell? It smells amazing. I love it. I can't Excellent. wait to try it. Yep. Excellent. It's beautiful. Yep. So we're going to go high heat again for a couple of minutes. Okay. And feel free to add some more butter or oil around the edges. Butter or oil? Yeah, whichever you prefer. Okay. And we're going to add it right around the edges. You hear that sizzling straight away? Yeah. You no, know, amazing. The butter is doing all the work. Mm. Absolutely, the butter is giving it color. There's salt in the butter, it's giving it flavor. We've already seasoned it. There's a little bit of onion in there, you can smell it coming through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, smells amazing. I'm using the slightly salted butter. Is that okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Any level of salt in butter for cooking is perfect. I mean, if you only have unsalted, we just add more salt, you know? Yeah, I know. I agree. So right now it should be smelling really, really good. Wow, well, yeah. The smell of the potato is really great. I mean, you can smell the smell of the potato now. At first, I didn't really smell it yet, but at this point, when we add the butter, hmm, I can smell everything. I can smell the smell. Butter is everything. Butter is everything for cooking. Yeah. I can smell the butter. So if you, press, if you press down on the rasta, you should hear a, tss, a sizzle. Okay. Yep. Can you hear it? Yeah. Excellent. And what you can do with this, with this pan, now that it's high heat, you can take it away from the heat and set it yep. to one side and then we keep cooking over the next 10 minutes. Okay, so... We'll take it away from the heat. Yep. And leave it on your counter and it will continue to cook. Okay, I see. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. 
So you want to get your steak, pen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put yeah. the pen. Yeah. Very, very lightly oiled. And I can still hear the rust sizzling over here. Yeah. Same here. Perfect. High heat. high heat? Yeah, initially we're going to start with no, we're going to go with high heat, yeah, definitely. Okay. And a little bit of oil, so you want to put a small bit of oil in the pan. Oil, okay. And then brush it in. Okay. Got it. So our say our steak is seasoned and it's near enough room temperature now, which is ideal for cooking smaller cuts of meat. Okay. It's quite a big pan, so I added more oil. Yep. Covering. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So we're going to heat our pan up as best we can. Mm -hmm. Also, we're going to put a little bit of salt in our pan, just a touch. Okay. To the place where we're going to put our steak, right? What we're going to do is, we're going to put our asparagus in the pan first. Okay. And then we're going to cook our steak next to it. I see. Okay. So you while, while we're cooking, while we're cooking uh, the asparagus and the steak, they're taking flavors from each other. We're going to be adding a little bit of butter and we're going to be pouring the butter in the pan over the steak and asparagus. And the flavor okay. should be outstanding. Okay. I see. Just give me a minute to get my tongue. Okay. Having a hard time finding it. <laughs> okay, got it. It's right Perfect. there. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. So you have your asparagus? Yes, I have them here. Ready. Is your pan hot? Very. So we're going to sit the asparagus into the left hand side of our pan. To the I can side. hear it sizzle. Sit it into the left hand side of your pan or whichever side, it doesn't matter yet. Just sit it into the side. And we're just going to leave it sit still. Okay, leave it. So we're going to add a little bit of butter right over our asparagus. Salted butter? Yeah, salt is perfect. Good, excellent, excellent. We want it brown and we want it crunchy. I see, okay. There we go, the bar is alive. Asparagus is in. It should be slightly browning. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the steak. Yep. And we're going to add our okay. steak in right next to it. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Do we turn the uh, Yeah, you can turn it. Okay. Wow, that smells amazing. Hmm. It's much better fried. It's traditionally boiled, but asparagus is definitely much better fried, especially with butter. It's so good. Wow, amazing. Love it. I can eat it quiet. This is perfect for dinner. So you'll see the natural oils coming out of the asparagus. Mm -hmm. And as we have butter in the pan, if you think you need more, add more. We always need more. Can we add more butter? That butter becomes a lovely, lovely golden brown color. Yep. The side of the asparagus or the steak? Smells amazing. <clears throat> and we're looking for a nice, uh, almost black color on the asparagus. Almost. Okay, mine is almost black and I've been worried. I didn't know that hot you wanted. <laughs> flavor, it's flavor. Wow, it's amazing. This smell is delicious. So, when you see the sides of your steak starting to turn brown, mm -hmm. we're going to turn it. Okay. When you see it starting to cook up through the steak, we're going to turn it and we're going to we're going to leave it on its other side. Do you want to take a look of like Yeah, steak? absolutely. I'll have a look. Okay. What do you think? Wow, it's beautiful cut of meat. Yeah, I'd say turn it. You can definitely turn it. Right now. Okay. Yeah, turn it definitely now, yeah. Okay. Fantastic, beautiful color. It's beautiful. I promise you. Beautiful. <laughs> Shall we add butter at this point? If you think you need more, add more. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take off our asparagus. Okay. We're going to take our asparagus out and let it rest for a minute. So it's amazing uh, dark color on the asparagus. Oh, nice. My asparagus is a little dark and somehow... Beautiful. Perfect. It has fun. Okay, awesome. Fried asparagus. The darker the better. Okay. <laughs> So can you see the blood coming from the top of your steak? The blood? There's no more blood. Perfect, excellent. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn it on its side. Okay. And fry the fat. Okay, okay. So, render this, okay. Do we do the same uh, as the other one? 
side. Yeah. Yeah. Every side. Every side. And seal it in. And we're going to let it cook for another couple of minutes. cook away for maybe another two or three minutes to rare. On high heat? Yeah, high heat. High heat. High heat. Okay. Keep it high heat. Wow. This is nice. I'm going to carry the glass of red wine. It's going to be perfect. Are you, how do you like your steak? Do you normally eat your steak rare or medium or... Medium well. It's more too well done. Medium well. Yeah. I normally eat mine. <laughs> I maybe cook mine for about 60 seconds. <laughs> for myself. But for me now, my steak is rare. It's, it's as good as it's ever going to be. Everything we do after rare takes flavor. Okay. Do I turn it now? No, I just leave it like this. Leave it on a high heat, and what we're going to do, I think, is we maybe start to plate, put our, put our plate together. Yes. With our rendang good. and our rosti and our asparagus, and we're going to, the steak will be ready in about a minute. We're going to rest it for another minute or two before we serve it. Okay. All right? Sure. Yep. What kind of plate do you have there? Uh, our pla I'm using the plates we have in the restaurant. They're a large uh, brown clay clay plate. Oh, I think like a dinner plate. Yeah, just about the same one. I think. Let me let me see. It's almost the same. Oh. My hands are slippery with the butter. Of <laughs> course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take our steak out of the pan and let it rest. Yep. But don't be afraid to rub it around with all that lovely butter. Or you do. Nice, beautiful, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely you. perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're gonna get our rendang sauce. Yes. And a spoon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. A spoon or a ladle? Yeah. A ladle. Take your time. Okay. The rundown? Okay. So we're going to take one large spoon and put it on the left hand side of the plate. One large spoon. Okay, I'm going to see you do it first. Then I'll copy that. Okay. Very interesting. Well done. Thank so you. Thank one you. large spoon, and then we're going to go like this. Mm -hmm. And drag it across our plate. Okay. Spoon and then drag. Okay? Okay. I think I can do that. 
Okay, because I'm using like a small spoon, so what do you think? Perfect, <laughs> like twins. <laughs> Okay. So we're gonna get our potato rusty. Mhm. Mm we're gonna get our rusty. Okay. Okay. Which is still piping hot, but sitting in a hot pan, and getting colored. And we're gonna sit our potato rusty just off of the large side of the rendering sauce, like that. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, just let me have a look. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. All right. Awesome. Do you put it on the side where there is more sauce? Or less yeah, sauce? exactly, on the side. On the side where there's more sauce, I would sit the rusty, definitely. Okay. Got it. Yep. And then we're going to get our asparagus. Mm-hmm. And we're going to sit our asparagus across the side where there's less sauce. At an angle. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to get our steak. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sit our steak across both. Okay. Okay, for those of you in the audience, if you have questions, um, we will cover it at the end of our session. So, we'll, we'll respond later. Thanks. So, you want to sit your steak across your rusty and your asparagus? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, can do that. Excellent. So we don't cut no, never. Not until we're eating it. Okay. Very simple, quick lunch. Beautiful. So Let me just go there. Okay. What do you think? Beautiful. I Love the color of the steak. Excellent. So we look here. Yep. Oh. Just a wow. little. A little wild Irish flower on top of my one. <laughs> wow, okay. I'll go out go outside to my front yard and get me some nice flower to put it on top. Yeah. A very so a very, very simple dish, but absolutely beautiful with the rendang sauce. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you so much. I really want to try it, but I just need to take a picture of it first. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So, can we try it? Can we try it of course. right now? Yeah, let's eat it. Let's do it. Okay, let me get my phone real fast. Okay. Um,
Did you speak Trevor? <coughs> Alphonse Renews. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay, I'm just going to bring the camera in a bit closer so I can get a picture. Okay. Beautiful. Let me just... Okay. Yum. <coughs> Simple Yay. food is always the best food. <laughs> Yay. This is so nice. Okay, I'm going to give it like a small cut. And yeah. eat it. I have to go. I have to go over there to just have a better lighting, but I'll do that later. Now I'm going to so, try it. Get a little bit of everything. Get a little bit of rusty, a little bit of rendai, a little bit of ribeye, or a little bit of wagyu. Hey guys. Okay, I'm going to cut it. Wow. So way to cut. Okay, just the end of. Oh, it's going to ruin the picture. Oh no, <clears throat> what do I do? Chef, I think you can go over with the chat. Can you see the chat? Mm -hmm. um, and you can start answering some questions while I go over there. Just one minute to take a nice picture with better lighting. I'll come yep. back very fast. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can go ahead. So somebody's asking, what's, what difference does it make to grill with a barbecue pit and a pan? Well, I suppose the, the flavor is the main difference. Um, charcoal flavor for me is unbeatable. I'm using a pan today because Nivea has a pan. And um, it'll just make it easier if we both had the same equipment. But for me, cooking outdoors with a naked flame is, is far superior any other farm we're cooking it's probably the most pure farm just um being able to use direct fire you know and being able to to control it more importantly somebody asked me if i'll put this on the menu quite possibly <laughs> um, but if i if i do it will definitely be cooked outside Somebody asking about the protein in the dish. Well, steak is full of protein. Um, your asparagus is full of vitamins and your potatoes are full of carbohydrates. It's a, it's a very well-balanced meal and the rendang sauce cuts through all of it perfectly. Wow. Okay. Wow. I think you have everything covered. Okay. Um, someone asked in Indonesia, in Indonesian, cara hilangkan bau um, she said that there's um, a strong smell to beef. Um, how do you get rid of that smell while you cook beef? Well, beef has its own individual flavor. It's like cooking any meat. Um, I would mm -hmm. say if you want to get rid of it, if you know you want steak tomorrow and you're not a huge fan of the smell of beef, but you love the taste, find a marinade and marinate your beef overnight. Okay, yeah. Find yep. a marinade that works for you and marinate it overnight and that will eliminate some of the odor while you're cooking and definitely give it more flavor. Okay, do you actually just uh, marinate it with salt and pepper or is there any ingredient that you would recommend? So for me, the perfect beef uh, marinade is salt, pepper, garlic and then salt cook it with pepper. Yeah, okay. but you can do anything. You can use, you can glaze it with barbecue sauce you can make a, a honey and butter reduction, glaze it with honey and butter, then add your salt, pepper, garlic. There's a million things you can do, and it's really, okay. it's going to be down to the taste of the person that wants it. Okay, I see. Okay, so I'm just trying to answer it in Bahasa. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Jadi, kalau mau hilangkan bau amis, itu kata chef itu bisa dimarinasi dulu satu hari sebelumnya. Jadi kalian bisa pakai salt, bisa pakai uh, garam, Merica juga harusnya itu kasih garlic ataupun uh, bawang putih. 
ataupun seperti barbecue sauce uh, apapun yang bisa meredam rasa amisnya jadi biasanya dimarinasi semalam besok paginya atau besok siangnya udah boleh di um, dimasak oke okay, so there's another question I think this is good which ingredient that you always use while cooking what is your favorite like your staple that you have in Indonesian like they ask but this is a good one so I'm translating So because of the type of um, cooking that we do here, I need a very dependable glaze for my meat, mm-hmm. for long slow cooks. And we couldn't get the right one. So we've actually developed one, our own, which is a glaze, a dipping sauce, all rolled into one. Now I'm going to hopefully send you some bottles of this to give to your viewers. Wow, yay. Awesome. It's- It's a really wow. traditional barbecue sauce dip and glaze. Wow, I can't wait to give it a try. <laughs> and that's sweet, salty, spicy. The three main keys of barbecue uh, and of cooking in general. So what I, what I, I will use that now for glazing ribs as a binder on beef brisket sometimes. We'll use it on our pulled pork. We use pig necks for our pulled pork for a 10 or 14 hour cook depending on the size. That will be our main glaze and all our other flavors will stick to that. Wow, you will save me a lot of time cooking with just one bottle, everything covered. Wow, amazing. I can't wait to try on um, um, ribs, actually baby back ribs. I yeah, that's what we use. We use baby back and we use a whole spare rib. Do we have a spare rib? Andy? I'll show you uh, one of our ribs. So um, we smoked them for six hours. Wow. Uh, is, and then what we do is we put them, say when, when an order comes in, we go yes. hot and fast on an open flame, glazed in that sauce again to finish, and they come out absolutely stunning. And again, wow. we're going for dark, dark brown colors. People are afraid that they're going to burn food. When that char, that gives it life, it gives it flavor, you know? Wow. And we use, cool. we use a much larger rib here. So I'm going to show you one portion of the ribs we use in the restaurant. Oh, can we see it? And it's about one kilo in weight. One kilo? Just one rib? This is one portion. One portion. One portion. Wow, that looks so good. <laughs> that looks really good. Did you cook so it? So that's a full spare rib and you can see okay. there's a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat on this. Yeah. We call, these, on the, on the we call these dinosaur ribs. Dinosaur ribs, amazing. <laughs> It's enough to feed the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Did you cook it uh, on the pit? On the back yeah, so I, what I do is I cook it in a smoker. Okay. With indirect Sorry. heat and, sm- and oak smoke uh, from uh, 20% moisture oak. Mm-hmm. over six hours using a method called three two one and then we let them cool and then we reheat them over a fire pit glazed um mm-hmm. and what we do is we catch all the juice underneath in a pan and so we don't waste mm-hmm. anything all the pork juice all the barbecue goes back on wow. it goes back on the rib we don't waste anything wow it's amazing i just can't wait to You know, maybe one day just go over to your restaurant and try everything. <laughs> It's gonna You're be more amazing. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. So um, actually, um, I think we cover pretty much all of the questions. Um, there's someone asking why did you source the turmeric leaves uh, in Ireland? An Asian market. I got them. Okay, that's one. There's quite a large Asian market in the city near us, so I got turmeric leaves there in Limerick City, Asian yep. market. Okay, yeah. Some people say awesome barbecue sauce. Yeah, hi, Diane. Yeah, it's, it, I bet it's wonderful. It covers, just like what Seth Mark said, it covers sweet, spicy, and salty. Yeah, so yep. everything is in there. Okay, so um, I think before we end, um, Shall we give it a try? Shall we give our dish a try? Oh, absolutely, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I can't try it. Make sure you get a little bit of everything. Okay, sure. 
I think I'm gonna have it with the rusty. Ooh, an asparagus with the rendang sauce. I'm gonna get my rendang sauce. Hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. I love it. So I love good. It. Yay. It's I may delicious. never eat pepper sauce again, to be honest. I think that um, the rendang. We skip, we skip the pepper sauce. I know we were going to cook it, but I don't think it needs it. I think what we did is perfect. That dish is so balanced. So we have the crispiness from the potato. We have the juicy steak. We have a vegetable and a sauce to break it down. Yeah. Four ingredients. Absolute perfection. Amazing. You know, actually the steak, the it cooks perfectly. It's still very tender and juicy. And the rusty, it smells so good from the butter and everything. And it's crispy. Yeah. But it's still not too oily, so I just love it. And the asparagus yeah. is just crunchy. So it's yeah. a bit of everything. And apparently it pairs really well with the rundown. I hope you like it too, really. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely love it, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so My pleasure. I appreciate your time here. And just uh, before we go, I have um, one last personal question. This is yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any tips for beginners on how to do um, pitch, like cooking on the smoker or, you know, something like that? I would say, if it's a beginner, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, if you're cooking on a smoker, you're, it's going to take a long time. There is no quick answer, really, if you're cooking large amounts of pork. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a thermometer, a little analog. I like analog. A lot of people use digital. Um, check it every hour. Have a goal. Know what temperature you need to be at before it's ready. Don't be afraid to wrap it after a certain amount of smoking to keep in your flavors and unwrap it near the end to, to get your colors. Don't be afraid to fail. I promise you, I've burned more barbecues than anybody I know. It takes okay. time. Okay, I see. So for those of you, okay, if not only for me, but I think Chef Mark is very kind and generous. For those of you who want to ask more about barbecue, make sure to follow him and just DM him, right? You'll be answering Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Very kind of you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, thank you so much again for today. Thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. We really had Me fun. too. I hope you had fun too. And I, I had a great time. On another episode. Thank I you so really much for having me. And I'm going to send you a case of barbecue sauce to give to your viewers, okay? Oh, okay. Amazing. Are you giving one to me? Me first? Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Okay, go to the viewers. Jadi buat kalian yang di rumah, Chef Hang akan ngasih kalian barbecue sauce yang dia akan kirim langsung dari Irlandia. Jadi kalian nungguin aja, aku akan post di Home Indonesia pastinya. Okay, so, um, okay, um, do you have anything else to say before we end? No, just thank you for having me, it was a pleasure. Thanks for showing me yeah, how to cook rendang. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I hope you like it. Yeah, okay, so, um, let's just keep the conversation going and let's be in touch i really appreciate you and that you want to send us um, some nice barbecue sauce i can't wait to try it thank you so much yeah have a My great pleasure. day chef and for you those too. of you who are tuning in thank you so much for being here diane chef zian um everyone thank you so much we'll see you on another episode bye bye, -bye. thank you very much bye bye take care bye bye